Hello everyone and welcome to Java Basics. Today we will learn about Thymeleaf and Spring MVC, which are the tools we can use to build a simple web UI. This isn't a refined UI like we have in the real world application. We'll get into that later. But first we need to understand the basics. I won't discuss the Wordle demo much, but we will get back to it next time around. I think it's important to understand some big concepts before we can continue. In the previous videos, we showed a bit of HTML content, but that was just the basics. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. With it, we can add semantic information to text. This is how the web is built. HTTP is the protocol we use for the web. With it, we send requests and receive responses. A typical example we saw already is the GET request. When we visit a web page with our browser, we start with the domain, which is the first part of the address here. If we visit localhost, it's a special case of the current machine. This is how the browser can find out that it wants to connect to our server running Spring Boot. This is the address that points at that. But there can be multiple servers running in the machine. That is why the port is important. It lets us run many servers on a machine, each with a different address. Typically, you don't add the port since we have well-known default ports. For HTTP, the default port is 80. For HTTPS, it's 443, but we rarely use them in a server due to limitations imposed by the operating systems. Instead, we typically redirect to these ports, which is su a subject for a DevOps course. Notice that I don't explain HTTPS either. It isn't hard. It just won't teach you anything interesting. The final part of the URL represents the, the request we send to the server. Now that the browser formed a connection to the right server, it requests a specific page, then gets back the HTML page, which it can display. If the HTML page contains within it images or other resource uh, references, then it requests them in the same way. This is what we saw in the REST API we worked on before, but now we will dig a bit deeper into that with Thymeleaf. REST is great, but we might want to create a web interface and not just a web service. One way we can do that is through Spring MVC. Spring MVC is built on the model view controller design pattern, which separates the application logic into three distinct components. The model, which represents the data and business logic of the application. The view is responsible for displaying the data to the user. And the controller, which handles incoming requests and coordinates the interaction between the model and the view. Here we can see a diagram of the classic MVC pattern. Spring MVC provides a flexible and extensible architecture for building web applications, making it a popular choice for both small and large scale projects. But it isn't quite like this diagram, since web-based applications don't really fit into the classic structure. The Spring MVC version includes all three parts of the MVC puzzle, but they are arranged a bit differently as you can see here. The view portion of Spring MVC is pluggable and can be implemented with any common templating engine. One of the popular choices is Thymeleaf. Thymeleaf is a Java-based template engine that is used to process and render HTML, XML, JavaScript, and other markup languages. It is designed to work seamlessly with the Spring framework, but can also be used in standalone applications. Thymeleaf's template, uh, templates are written in standard HTML and use special attributes and tags to bind data to the template. This is all very abstract, 
Let's explain this with some code to simplify it. This is the simplest timely file I can build. You will notice it's a standard HTML page, just like we built before. Let's go over the page and see what we have here. The doc type declaration just says that this is an HTML page. This is important to automated tools. Uh, so automated tools will know how to treat this files, this file. There, are, there's more nuance to this uh, declaration, but for now you don't really need to know all of that. First, we open the HTML tag which must be the parent tag of all HTML files. Everything in HTML must reside between an opening tag here and a closing tag like we have here. So far, everything we did has nothing to do with Timeleaf and everything to do with writing HTML. The second part of the tag is the XML namespace declaration. This is an attribute which lets us provide additional details about a tag. You don't really need to understand this, but it essentially means that things won't collide with uh, one another in the HTML. We let the code that reads the HTML know that we will be using Thymleaf here. Notice that we use the word parsing when machines read text input. Typically, a browser would parse the HTML, but with Thymeleaf, this is done within Spring Boot first. The header lets us put uh, material related to the document, like title, author, description, etc. In this case, I only added the title, but you get the drift on how HTML works. It's relatively simple. The body tag contains the actual content of the document, which is simple in this case, it's one header value that we can see here. Headers are written in large font and H1 is the largest of all. Between the opening and closing tag, we can see the hello world statement, which is good. In fact, if I take this file and open it in a browser, it would work. That's the beauty of Thymeleaf. I can edit and preview the file even without running the server and things should work. This is the one piece of Thymeleaf in this code. This attribute says that we want to replace the content of the H1 body with the value from the attribute. In this case, it will replace hello world with hello world. So there will be no difference but it can replace it with far more elaborate statements. After Thymleaf processes the HTML file, the browser will receive this file without the Thymleaf code. As you can see, the th text attribute is removed and the value hello world is displayed in the browser. This example is very basic, uh, a very basic template and does not use any dynamic data. However, it illustrates the basic concepts of how Thymeleaf binds data to a template. There's a lot more we need to do to integrate this into the Wordle demo. So I'll cut this short and we'll proceed with a refactor of the previous demo next week. Don't worry if you feel you don't get Thymeleaf yet. This will all come together as we build the actual application with it. If you have any questions, please use the comment section. Thank you.